bottom side. Kelra, though, will be fine. Had to use the Purify, but will have Escalera there with him as well. So let's take a quick look at the oh. emblems. All right, Assassin emblem here on the Lancelot with an Impure Rage. Yeah, that's uh, damage. That's, that's, just, that's just damage, uh, of course, with the, the, the Veteran Hunter. But this fight's continuing. I'm liking how bottom lane, the, one of the first few moves we see from uh, the OG oh. lineup is uh, aggression. Oh, Lord. Yeah, he's going to take a lot of oh. damage. H2O falls under that tier two. So King Kong able to go ahead and get that first blood. That felt like a crash, a collapse in priorities coming from Omega. Because the Minotaur, at most cases, should be with the Lancelot here. Yep. Up against a Baxia, up against an Angela. I guess he's just overloaded. Again, I was going to say, I'm happy that one of their first few moves was actually to pressure Kelra, And that's something that any team that's against Kelra uh, should be doing. And that's what Onik did. They, 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 they faked it down bottom and said, look, you can take down the gold standard. Oh, wait. Nope. Pressure elsewhere. Yeah, right now. Putting the pressure still on Kelra. That's probably one of the good options oh. that they have right now. But with this turtle being up, it looks like H2O Gonna just go ahead and focus on these objectives. They're gonna give it up for now. They still might try to put some pressure here on Kelra, but right now it might just be, let's get the buff, give up that turtle. We wanna build up from here. This is a move that Onik PH should be very, very familiar with. This yeah. is exactly what they did in game one. They traded out huge objectives like the turtle for these smaller ones across the map. But now suddenly you have to consider, is Omega ready for that? Because now they have to switch up. Now they have to say, you know what, Big J, you have to find that snap. King Kong with a steal himself. Okay, now I understand. Even though it's as if Omega un gets now that, yeah, the jungle might not always be the best for H2, but our goal here is to really just stop Kelra. Delay Onic time as much as possible. We're seeing it in the playstyle of Jome, Fighter Emblem Carry. He wants to go fast up against his Claude, win gold lane immediately. But I, Leo, I have to kind of disagree here with Omega in the approach. They can't always just focus on the gold. There's That's still right. other parts of the map. That's right. There's very little that they're gaining, actually. Uh, if anything, the fact that it's Escalera on the Angela, which I'm actually happy for, uh, and that allows for friends to pick up the uh, gourd, much to Naisu's pleasure. Uh, it allows for Onik to actually send Escalera elsewhere and keep Kelra safe even if Omega forces the issue here. Even if Omega says, you know what, we're gonna keep going, 500 gold oh. in, and now oh. H2's in trouble again. Oh, H2 in trouble again! Even with the execution, we'll get taken down in the same spot as earlier as King Kong gets another one. That hurts. Omega, again, focusing a lot on the gold lane. They need to get gains from this approach as much as possible because now H2 is struggling up against King Kong, Escalera, even Super Friends. How often is that a kill zone? How often is that a hot box in the <laughs> early game for a team underneath tier one and tier two? So that just, just shows how fragile Omega's box is right now. Yes, they had an early approach of let's pressure Kelra, but the question is how far can you take that? And we're not even considering the upper quarter. We haven't really talked about the whole Gem versus Ryota matchup. Yeah. So far, Ryota just actually built up his War Axe. Yep. And usually, it's a, it's a big 50-50 between these two. They both hurt, they both regen. So it's like, all right, whoever wins this lane is just straight up better. And with that, better or not, this is going to be another objective in the hands here of Onik Philippines. And that, that makes me wonder, right? When I was asking this in the draft, you see Baksha picked up first. You still go the route of picking the Lancelot into it, right? So now, not only that matchup is a little bit tougher, especially having an Angela in the hands of Escalera here, but now you're kind of a little bit behind. I mean, you see it there, right? And he's struggling to get in these objectives. So in order for something to really change here, Smart Omega has to find a pickoff, a kill, at least to keep things close together before they get to uh -oh. those Lord fights. Oh, this is what we were talking about earlier. The last time he uh -oh. played season 11. Oh. Bottom side, Rebo going to be in trouble, flickers out. We'll be able to survive oh. one hit away, and now Jome trying to help him, keeping it down. Ooh, Kelra, oh, though. Okay. Okay. They got to respect the damage. Meanwhile, in the mid lane, oh, once again, H2O. He's probably having flashbacks of that side of the turret right now. Yeah. Again, it's a glass house here uh, that Omega's playing with. There's very little they're putting on the board to actually assert dominance and say, you shall not pass. The, 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 
this ride is only open for people of this height. No, it, it doesn't work like that. Onyx can actually just go wherever they want. And I'm thinking of a solution now. Uh, earlier we were asking, how can Omega leverage this? And how can they make sure that they get into a position wherein they're actually threatening anything from Onyx? Because so far, they've taken nothing. Uh, six minutes in, it's actually Onyx who's actually lived inside Omega's base, uh, rather Omega's jungle. Yeah, well, one thing I want to see Omega try is if they spot an opportunity to even just like use their abilities to take down two, just go for it and then just back off. Of course, find the right timing, not too soon before an objective, things like that. But they can't just try to look for a picture perfect oh. setup. As King Kong invades. Hard guard are we going to be used? They're going to go ahead and try to get this purple buff. Fury comes down. There's oh. the gush, forcing Rebo back. H2O goes in. Super Friend's still going to be alive, though, but they have nowhere to run oh. as they get continuously stunned under the tier one, forced out of there. All right, if there's ever a first kill from Omega, it's got to be from Super Friends, unguarded. And that's about it. Uh, it's so hard to take a pick off of Kelra has a Purify, yep. maybe Escalera. But Escalera is very rarely going to cross the river, especially as long as it's still the turtle phase, or especially until wow. they can't confirm a kill. Because yeah. look, I've never seen Escalera actually cross the river. Yeah, the times we'll see Escalera is him putting his ultimate onto someone, <laughs> the hard guard onto someone. Exactly. And, and now I understand the dilemma of Omega where they were, it feels like they were forced to pick the Lancelot because they needed more heroes to reach that Gorg. Oh. Who we've seen in the sequences now is the big problem for Omega. Jumping in once again, Exhort has to flicker oh. out, but it will get taken down by the waves. EG comes down, the Eternal Guard there to help him in the front side, but it's not going to be enough. Oh. Elra though did fall off camera to H2O, able to find a kill there in that mid lane. So far, Omega's still solving a problem that they had faced uh, at the three or four minute mark. And Onyx are looking forward here to this Lord coming in in a minute and a half. And there's very little that Omega's bringing, very little that Omega can actually consider to do, especially since now King Kong can actually get to these buffs with very little punish. I'm wondering where H2's looking for farm. Look, he's looking for farm in lane. Yeah, he, he's just uh, grasping at straws. Oh. oh, no, no, Exort. Ex oh. Whoa. That's tough. And uh, that's why the Gord is so strong. Again, even under the turret, you're not safe. Yeah, Asaka said to Zuko, that's rough, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> he had nowhere else to go there. He just, it's like, it looked like at one point, XR just said, this is my fate now. Yep. Especially knowing that he didn't have the flicker uh -oh. available. Now crashing down, just with <laughs> the, the pressure alone by the drive-by. They're going to go in under the turret. Turret's going to be worked on. They're fighting for it. Rebo going to be in trouble. Oh. Flickers into the wall and will fall there under the tier two Big right J. now. They're oh, struggling. Jome. Jome. Big J. Can he do anything though? Escalera's gonna find him trying to get the kill. There's a flicker out though. Jome in trouble. Gets taken out by Super Fritz. In recent history, we've actually seen carries do that. We've seen carries take pixel brushes, yeah. river brushes, and then get maybe a 2v1 kill or any kind of trade. But not at nine minutes, not when you're down about 3,000, 4,000 gold, and when the rest of your team are either respawning or are elsewhere inside your base. That was very risky from Jome. And again, now you're seeing maybe signs of desperation, maybe signs of communications breaking down, where Omega's just saying, you know, just let's just get something. Yeah. Uh, Onik now still in control, and uh, I can see them continuing this until there's a, unless there's a big error coming from their side. Because Omega, the, they do not have the greatest punish power in the world. You see them, Ryota struggling already. Armor already taken out. Again, they're just going to leave Kalra there to work on the Lord. Keeping Omega at bay the best they can till the Lord's ready for taking. King Kong goes in, gets it secured. And now on a Philippines, a massive lead ahead. Kelra just picked up uh, the uh, corrosion site there, now has a Trinity. So he's oh. barreling on miles ahead from Jome. Uh, checking out uh, that Gord here, sitting at 205, uh, uh, definite menace from Omega. Also has his version of the Trinity, the Tranche, uh, the uh, Ice Queen Wand, and the Talisman. And as if that wasn't enough, Escalera just picked up his fleeting time. So now every kill, yeah. much like Martise's Decimate, now just snowballs onto one another. So they can pick fights on fights on fights, and Ooh. ults are not going to be an issue. Wait, so the third item the Keller built was the Corrosion Scythe? Correct. That's what you just mentioned. That's oh, the interesting. Last item you build. Okay, I get it. It's because he's up against a fighter carry in that lineup of Omega. He went DHS first. Yep. 
Golden Staff, and then Corrosion Scythe last. Wow, great itemization by Kelra. And again, it's the same matchup uh, from earlier, but the other way around. He knows that as the carry, this is what I'm looking for, this is how I will suffer in lane, and he put that into this Claude build. Super Frizz making it look look easy, nice too. Yep. This is one of the strengths. Oh! You know, you can just fire off from there. H2O gonna pump out quite a bit of damage ooh, though. Ooh, okay. They're gonna have to respect that, but once again, the assault on the base is still gonna continue top side. Eternal Guard gonna jump down the oh. gun though! Forcing oh. Dome to flicker as well. Thinking he was gonna go down and out. Rebo takes the stun, but they hold on to the turret for now. Big J lives, the inhibitor lives, and Omega here to see another Lord. Uh, Coming in in about 80 seconds, I don't think they're in any position to contest. Yep. But at least they can breathe and, you know, sigh uh, some bit of relief knowing that, hey, we still have our turrets. We can still kind of punish. The, the, the punish is not impossible. It's not a 0% chance. Ooh. Something that I want to point out here that as we look at the Infinix hand cam, folks, King Kong has been really timing that shield unity uh, whenever H2 comes in to get a moment to stun H2 before he can Phantom Execution away. I guess he's timing it. Yeah, he's timing it really well. To the point wherein the margin of error is so small for Onik that he can actually put himself in trouble first. Yeah. King Kong can say, you know what, I can take a few hits even from a turret just to get you. Oh, and now Onik, similar story to game number one. And unfortunate for the old guard, the veterans of Barangay Omega, they're just up against I guess that's what, that's what it takes to build a Barangay family. Yep. Or at least break down a Barangay. Definitely a full assassin build on H2's uh, Lancelot. Yep. And uh, Exhort is struggling, man. Exhort is just at two items. And he had to build the second item winner tranche because of how bad it's going. Mm. Yeah, which is crazy, again, knowing how strong this Vexana pick has been so far. You know, even in other regions. And it's contested for a reason, but right now, with this Lord coming up here, Smart Omega, despite being down the 9,000, nearly the 9,000 gold, they want to be very careful on how they approach yeah. this part of the map. It might be better if they just go back. They got to get the call. Gem oh, holding them on the front side. Lord is going to go back to being worked on here by King Kong, but Smart Omega can't even get this side of the jungle. It's a clean take. And I guess you got to say, I understand now uh, as this gets to a free Lord take by Onyx what Omega was thinking, right? It, there, it's enough peel between uh, Rebo's Minotaur and Exhort's EG, yep. but it's a very, very dangerous way to, to assume that, hey, we're gonna get that moment, to get that big Minotaur, uh, Minoan, Ulti, uh, Minoan Fury, and the EG timed. It's never happened here. 13 minutes in, it's never happened. Yeah, I also really want to commend Onik for picking up the uh, last pick Gord. If that was a different mid laner, someone that who has to get a little bit closer, not range, they wouldn't have needed to pick up the Lancelot on the side of Omega. It would have been something tanker. Could have been more even. Yep. But since they picked a backline heavy mage, they were forced to pick a Lancelot up against a Baxia and what everything else that Onik has. So this is the story. Oh, uh oh, Super Friends taking Whoa, quite a bit of damage, but H2O Whoa. could be in trouble now as he Whoa. might get stunned, able to get away from it. Oh, but the beam comes get down. You? Still going to survive though. Eternal Guard comes out. Kara on the back side goes in with the heart guard, able to clean up the kill on H2. Now Smart Omega has to deal with the Lord and then the mid lane push from the rest of the team. A full force of Onyx Philippines as Rebo gets whittled down. Ooh. Ryota with the last insanity to clear the waves out. They have another wave okay. to handle here. Can they stay in the game? The base is going to be worked on though as Onyx Philippines continues whoa, 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 to push whoa, 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 whoa. in. But they're holding it together for now. Still King Kong with the heart guard going to force them back. Job trying to clear the waves. Oh. Gets taken down as Onyx Philippines sweeps the series. No surprises here. And what surprise are you talking about? <laughs> Onyx PH. Calm, cool, and collected. Systematic sweep.